I love marking gauges. In fact, here's just some of mine here. Uh, this is a really cool old like 1898 Stanley marking gauge, uh, but I love them because they are the most useful thing in any sort of joinery or furniture in general. In fact, every joint of the week you see behind me here uh, used a marking gauge in one part of the project. Jeez, my glasses are really dirty. So when Mike Taylor told me he had a kit to make them for 10 bucks, I thought it was gonna be garbage, but it is not at all. I ordered a few and it comes with this quarter inch massive brass knurled knob. I think if you ordered that from a Mick MasterCard, it'd be 15 bucks by itself. A couple brass inserts, three cutter heads, a rod, absolutely incredible. So we're gonna make some today. Here's a few that you can make. Uh, there are step-by-step -step instructions as well as eight templates if you don't wanna just make your own. The only thing about a marking gauge that is important is that the rod is perpendicular to the face and the face is flat. So after that, it can be anything you want. He has some other accessories that you can get uh, like some brass inserts, which are just wear gauges. I mean, if you're a massive marking gauge user, it would be helpful. It certainly is beautiful. Uh, you can get cutter heads for a mortising gauge. A mortising gauge is gonna have two cutter heads on it. So you can set them a certain distance apart and then a certain distance from an edge. It comes with a lock knob. That one's really cool. And that's really helpful if you're doing a bunch of mortise and tenons. Uh, you can put two rods in one, which is really cool. Uh, it's the same basic thing as a mortise engage, but it also functions as two separate measurements. So you can set them at different lengths and use it this way and then flip it over and use it this way and do two measurements. So there's tons of options open to you. And all those templates are available in the free step-by-step -step guide to making these. So. I wanna do my version, I'll probably do a couple. Um, I've got some really cool old scraps that I wanted to use, some Madagascar ebony, some rosewood, some lacewood. That's the fun of something like this, is it's just an afternoon project um, you know, for a couple bucks and you can do anything you want and it just looks super cool. Uh, a couple things that are gonna be really useful to you is an eight millimeter drill bit. If you're in America, you may not have one, I would recommend getting one because that's gonna make the rod very, this is gonna be full of them guys and ladies. Uh, I always get roasted for not including the ladies. So I want you to know, I understand you have just as dirty of a mind as us gentlemen. Eight millimeter rod is going to be nice and stiff in there. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna come out much better than using, I think it's like 21 64ths is the, the next size up from eight millimeter if you're doing Imperial, uh, as well as a quarter inch and a 25 64 inch drill bit. And those are very specific sizes for the threaded inserts and making sure those come in correctly. So. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through the steps and how to do it. And if you wanna check out the kits and the plans, free plans, I'll link all that stuff down below. So uh, let's get into gluing up some blanks. All right, so I've got this beautiful piece of Madagascar ebony left over from that mallet we made for Vlad. Uh, and then I have this piece, experimental piece I did, God, it's been sitting in my scrap pile for a few years, of some rosewood and lacewood together. And I thought it'd be really cool to laminate that on the face and we made it, I may decide to use this as the face, but it's gonna be cool. And then I can choose like an area of mostly rosewood or more lacewood and kind of pick a couple that look really good. Now, when you think about thickness, these knurled knobs that come with the kit are three quarters of an inch wide. And so you wanna definitely be more than that. I, I'd recommend maybe going an inch and a quarter for your final thickness, but Again, as long as it's more than three quarters, you're gonna be fine. And after you glue up, you're gonna to wanna to square and mill your stock so that it's still square. Cause when you drill for the inserts in these, we'll see when we get to those. Uh, in fact, here's some of the templates. When you drill the inserts, you wanna make sure that uh, you're drilling on a flat reference area cause that's gonna set you up for success. Um, whereas like if you look at this one here, it's a big rounded area or the double, the mortising one or the dual one, uh, those are difficult. It's going to be impossible to drill if you've already cut this shape. So we're going to glue this up, mill it square, and then we're going to decide on what shapes and which part of this we want to take out of.
By the way, if you've watched any of my blade videos where I talk about the CMT blades, that was a six month old ripping blade. And I mean, just, it's almost finish ready, maybe like 220 grit and that's ready for finish. That was pretty impressive. Sorry, I digress. All right, so now we're going to pick our templates. I've chosen two. So one of the things that I wanna do is I wanna do a one mortise engage. So I've chosen uh, this real big guy here because of the big reference face. And then I really kind of like this tombstone shape of this one. So I'm gonna do that one as well. Now, here's the things you need to think about here when you do your template. Now, you want the knurled knob to intersect with the rod. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna drill your eight millimeter hole first. And then you're gonna drill a quarter inch drill bit here and then you're gonna do your 25 60 fourths. Uh, and that's gonna allow the threaded rod, and I'll show you in a minute, but you're gonna use a quarter inch bolt to get that to seat squarely. But it's important that this knurled brass knob hits your cutter rod so that it holds it tight, obviously. So you don't wanna just cut out one of the lines and try and square it up with your stock. You wanna square up the reference lines in your template. So what that's gonna allow you to do is you're gonna take your square and as you're setting your template, you're gonna wanna kind of move it around so that your square lines up the line that you're going to drill. So in my case, um, I think I'm probably not gonna do it from the side, I'm gonna do it from the top. So I'm gonna put my template on there, I'm gonna make sure it's square, then I'm gonna bring down my stock just to that line. We're not gonna cut any curves yet because we're gonna drill our holes first. First our eight millimeter and then we're gonna intersect that with the quarter inch and do that. So you really want, repeatability is key here. So you wanna use your drill press. This has to be perpendicular to your rod. And we're gonna go ahead and cut these out so that they're square. We're not gonna do any of the rounding yet. We're gonna drill our two holes um, with three different size drill bits. And then we're gonna check back in uh, and talk about what the next steps are. All right, so uh, time to drill some holes. And when I was cutting this on the crosscut sled, that's probably closer than you wanna be with your fingers, but after doing that saw stop video, I'm pretty confident in my saw. However, uh, now that we've got some small parts, it's really important to be thinking about your soft squishy bits here. These wooden clamps work great for holding small stuff. And then when you're doing these holes, it's gonna be important that you're holding your, holding your piece down with a clamp or something like that. One, because it's gonna allow you a greater deal of accuracy. But also too, again, these are getting to be pretty small. You don't want your hands in there. Make sure when you drill your through holes that you have backer board. One of the things we're gonna do is you can see this cutter, you can see the profile of it here. And you can see Mike, when he made this one, he didn't chamfer this very much. I'm gonna do a huge chamfer in this hole. So that way, when I put this away, I can retract the cutter head all the way into the body and uh, protect it. I mean, the kit comes with three cutters and I'm gonna show you at the end here how to sharpen these, but it's just a good thing to do. It's good practice to keep those protected. So uh, let's get to drilling some holes. And I know I've said it 25 times already, but we're gonna drill a quarter inch hole until we see it come out our eight millimeter hole here. You can set the depth on your drill press if you have a stop. And then you're gonna take your 25 64 bit and you're gonna drill down a half an inch. And that's gonna allow you to set the threaded insert. And you wanna remember you're drilling down a half inch from the top of your template or whatever design you chose. So let's get to drilling some holes and then I'll show you how we put in the threaded inserts and finish these bad boys up. All right, so here's the brilliant part of the instructions is the reason you drill that quarter inch hole is brass is very soft. And the reason we're putting it in now before we shape it is because we need it to go in straight and it's very sandable. Brass and uh, aluminum, things like that, any woodworking tool, take it down. So with the slotted side down, you're gonna thread it on just a quarter inch, your regular quarter 20 bolts with a washer on it. And then I'm gonna just do a little dab of epoxy, like the tiniest dab in there. Uh, I don't even think it's necessary, but just in case, give it a little added strength. 
But the quarter inch hole is now gonna guide the bolt perfectly. So when you crank this in with a wrench, it's gonna go in straight. You're gonna sink it down as far as you can. And then when you go to sand, even if you're hitting the top of it, it's gonna follow the curvature of your design and it's gonna work great. So we're gonna put these in and then we're gonna go to the belt sander or whatever you wanna to do to take it down to the line. I might even hit this with a hand plane a couple times just to get it closer because my band side, the tire just ripped off so I don't have anything to take this down. Uh, but we're gonna go get to our lines. And remember, the reason I use double stick tape instead of like that spray 3M 77 adhesive is because we really don't wanna mess with this face as little as possible. I'm just gonna hit this with like some 220 uh, and that is it. So that's why I use tape instead of spray adhesive. But we're gonna thread these in and then take it down to the line. And uh, then we'll probably, I'm gonna chamfer the corners maybe on the router table. Again, being careful to use something to hold it and not hold this with my, my hands. But we're going to uh, put these together after that. So uh, let's get to finishing these up. So one thing I forgot to do and I should have mentioned is you should chamfer this hole a little bit. And that's why is uh, if you're using, you know, real dense hardwood or something like that, it's going to start to pull up. Now, granted, I wasn't too worried about that because we're going to be sanding this down anyways quite a bit, but just something to think about. All right, now it's time to put these together. Now I know I promised I'd show you how to sharpen these. So here's the trick if you wanna come in here and take a look. So you can see this has a bevel on it that goes this way. And so that is sort of carried under the bottom here. So the only thing that's gonna to touch if you lay this flat is the edge of that. So you're gonna take a fine stone uh, and you're gonna use whatever lubricant you use and you're just gonna go with even pressure until you get a fresh edge. And you'll be able to see when it becomes a circle again, if you have like nicks and stuff in it, that it's a fresh edge. And that's all you have to do. That'll be plenty sharp for what this tool does. So let's go ahead and put these together. All right, so in the regular kit, I'll show you in a second the mortise extra blades you can buy. Comes with the knurled thumb knob, the two inserts, and then a screw for the end of the rod that holds the cutter head, and then three cutters. So. All you need to do is take the cutter head and you wanna put the bevel towards the marking gauge because what that does is it hugs your marking gauge to it. So when you're cutting a line, it sucks the fence side to your workpiece. And that's the reason I don't like those pin cutter heads because they tend to ride the grain and go all wonky. So you just take the screw, stick it through your cutter head, make sure you don't cross thread it. And then you're going to just give that guy a nice tightening and it centers itself just like that. And then you're gonna go through your marking gauge. And this is why I use the eight millimeter bit because this has got a really good friction fit. You can see we recessed it so our cutter head is protected. And you're gonna take your thumb screw. There we go, we are tight. Look at that, that is done. Now, let's talk about the mortise and tenon. All right, so when you're putting together the mortise and tenon kit, if you got that one, it has three pieces. And be careful, there's some very small set screws. Make sure those aren't loose in there. Uh, and if they are, I would put it on your Allen key first and then thread it in. Don't try and thread them in by hand. Uh, now, earlier I think I said this was a stop, but the, it's not. The stop is the knurled screw. This is a support piece. Uh, this helps if you're doing very like long, if you're, Mortise or tenon is far away from your fence. This helps support because these ride on the outside of this rod, whereas the regular marking gauge, it the rod itself will add support. So the way these go on there, these two cutters are the exact same, but the first one goes bevel towards the fence, and then the second one goes bevel away from the fence. And you're gonna be able to tighten that one and sort of forget it. It can just stay on the end of the rod. And the other one is going to be the one that is adjustable. And so the way those work, is let's say you wanted a half inch or a one inch mortise. So we're gonna set those at one inch. We'll pretend that's exactly one inch. And then this is your support. So when you run your thumb screw in here, 
you can use this, sort of set it in the middle somewhere, or you can put it all the way up against your cutter, um, depending on how far away you are. And then let's say you have a wide piece, you can use that as a support for running your mortise. And there you go. And you can see you got a perfect one inch mortise uh, and that's pretty cool. Man, these came out so good, guys. I'm really, really happy with it. So I'm looking at Mike's now, and I realize he got his threaded inserts in further. So maybe drill a little bit deeper than half an inch there. Oh, free Cat's Moses jig. Drill a little bit deeper than half an inch. And he also used a washer uh, that was, I think, narrower than the bolt head, which helped drive it in. I don't know, play with that some. Mine came out great, but just sanding them made them look a little wonky. Uh, not that I don't, not that I think I would ever notice. But these are beautiful. The Madagascar ebony and the rosewood and the lacewood together, I think look really, really cool. Uh, but I'm looking at some of Mike's. The cherry with the walnut is pretty unbelievable. He's got a thick rosewood with walnut. They're just gorgeous. And the possibilities are endless and you can make them any shape you want. Because again, the only thing that matters is this is flat and the rod is perpendicular and you have yourself a marking gauge. So not bad for a $10 project and some scrap wood. I mean, can't beat it. So uh, guys, Everything's linked down below. Everything I use, the free plans, the templates, um, and just go have at it. This is like just a cool thing to have. And it's one of the most used tools in any type of joinery. So I highly recommend. This was a lot of fun. Took us a couple hours and uh, came out unbelievable and something I'm super proud of and will have for uh, a very long time to come. So stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day. If you want to support the channel, head over to the Cats and Moses store. Pick up an apron, a dovetail jig, or a stopwatch. Guys, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.